This game is T and is not suitable for kids. By the time I leave, dusk is approaching. I go to an ATM and withdraw everything in my account. Oh! So he actually does have a few savings, but he's using everything for it. This is the money I saved up to get out of the damned house. In the end, I never got a chance to spend it and completely forgot I had it. Oh. Did we actually find out where he gets his money? <laughs> Japanese fast food isn't that great, but instant food is restaurant level. <laughs> okay. Now I want to thank my delinquent self. Next up is the hardware store. It's close enough to walk to, but I don't have much time. I decide to take the bus from the station. As I walk quickly to the edge of the sidewalk, a bench on the other side of the street catches my eye. Three female students wearing my school's uniform are sitting on it. I wonder which ones they could be. Going to school on a Sunday? Wait, the Founders Festival ceremony is today. I wonder what Furukawa and the others are doing. One of them turns around on the bench and sees me. Hey, girls. What a surprise. Nagisa is like, oh, hey there. Ryo is shy, and Kyo is being kind of a butt. <laughs> She's like, oh, what are you doing here? I didn't want to see you. You guys! I run up. I can't tell if that was an angry or like a, you guys! I run over to them, but they're still seated when I get there. Something seems wrong. On one side of the bench is a familiar violin case. Isn't that the violin from the other day? You borrowed it again? No one answers. Oh, they were trying to get her the violin for her birthday gift, I bet. In the anime, Tomoya got the money from part-time work. Never seen him go to work unless he's paid to make fun of Tsunohara by Kyo. Nah, Kyo wouldn't pay him in real money. She'd be like, I'll buy you fruit juice. <laughs> I notice that there is something wrong with the case. The hinge is coming off and the latch is bent. I pick it up and open the lid. Whoa. I groan in surprise. The violin is cracked in half. Oh no. The neck part with the strings is completely separated from the body. Oof. The front side of the body is scraped up and split open. What happened to it? Still no answer. Place your bet. Well, I guess it's unfair to say place your bets when you all probably know who broke it, but I was going to say who broke it. My guess is Kyo did it, and she's going to make other people take the blame. When I try to ask one more time, Kyo answers, her head's still down. I start to understand what happened as she explains. The three of them wanted to do something for Kotomi on their own. With the help of Nisha Nishina from the Choral Club, they found the original owner of the violin. The owner is a former member of the Choral Club and completely forgot about ban abandoning the violin there. Aww. Oh, whoops. Sorry, Kyo. The three were so happy and they wanted to get the violin polished up. Aw, that's such a great gift. Furukawa and Fujibayashi must have been really happy. They were walking across the street totally carefree and unaware while holding the violin case. Suddenly a motorcycle ran a red light and flew by them. Furukawa and Fujibayashi almost got hit. Well, thank goodness they didn't! The motorcycle actually clipped the case, causing it to open in midair. The violin slammed against the ground. Oh, so it was nobody's fault, except the motorcyclist. Tommy Kyo, were you the biker? Because I know you have a bike. Kyo's attempt at cheering them up falls on deaf ears. The two are still completely dejected. I don't think Kyo actually was the biker. She doesn't have a motorcycle, she's got like a scooter. Where's the biker? Oh, well, he got the Butt of the Year Award for 2004. Actually, no, that was the soccer club. Holy Kyo, you're just a little bit violent. Have you noticed that? <laughs> Hold it. Going that far would be considered homicide. Yeah, I don't think that's true. <laughs> you know, I can't imagine a situation where you'd have a metal pipe handy in the first place. She's probably just going to start carrying one around, just cuz. <sighs> Still. 
I have no problem with motorcyclists. I just have a problem with that motorcyclist who ran a red light and almost killed two girls. <laughs> Unable to think of a good joke to ease the situation, I just look up at the sky. First a bus, now a motorcycle. They say that when it rains, it pours, but why now of all times? Hello, Chris. Welcome. Don't cry, Furukawa. It's not your fault. This is my least favorite sprite in the game right here. I'm actually with Kyo on this one. You shouldn't blame yourselves for something that was not your fault. I'm just glad that none of you were hurt. Kyo tries to cheer them up again, and Furukawa and Fushibayashi finally look up. Did you let the music shop guy take a look at it? I ask this while pointing at the violin case. Kyo morosely mumbles to herself. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> If there was a Clannad fighting game, Tomoyo and Kyo would be the best. You mean the one on clearance for way too much? I think of the violin in the store window while asking. I guess for a violin, $1,400 isn't, like, outrageous? I know how expensive instruments are, but still. Oof. At least he was honest about it. Just for the repairs? The savings I withdrew wouldn't even begin to cover it. No worries, Chris. You don't have to watch if you have other things you need to do. I won't be streaming for as late today. But at this point, right, we might be able to finish the Kotomi route. We only have two decisions left, and they both happen today. Then again, the May route, we finished all the decisions for her route before her route technically even started, so... <laughs> I don't think he was doing that, Kyo. She says that confidently, but even as an amateur, I can see the truth. Considering how badly this violin's damaged, I don't think it's out of place to recommend a new one. Hmm... Everyone goes silent again. We all know Kyo is right. Kotomi took such great care of this old instrument in the short time she had it. If she heard that it had been destroyed, how would she react? I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> Alright, Sonic. Have a good one. Enjoy your time at work. Hope you have a productive day. Kyo mumbles to herself while staring at the ground. <laughs> they have to- No! Don't give up. Never give up. We won't stop giving all we've got. <laughs> you can't give up. I say that to them. Kyo, Furukawa, and Fujibayashi all look at me. You don't know that it can't be fixed. <laughs> Let's give it another shot. I carefully pick up the case with the broken lid. Whether or not it can be fixed, we can't just leave it like this. Those words come out naturally. The end result isn't important. If I don't do everything I can right now, I'll definitely regret it later. Fujibayashi and Furukawa place their hands on the tattered violin case. I nod and hand over the case. Come on, Kyo. Put on that cute smile. No, I don't want you to fight. Please just keep quiet. The pace of the conversation returns to normal. Smiles are also returning to their faces. I remember my role. That's right. This is how it should be. If they're not smiling, Kotomi will be even sadder. The owner of the instrument shop is just as stubborn as Kyo. Marty, I am coming over, but I'm streaming first. <laughs> I'll be over at, like... 5, 5.30, probably. Okay? <laughs> I like Tomi on this route, too. He's way 
better than he is in a lot of other routes. <laughs> I know, the, the options to avoid the bad end for this are very obvious. Others are not so much. I still think the least intuitive one has got to be Kyo's route. In order to get Kyo's good ending, you have to date her sister and then break up with her. Like, that's sound, that sounds... Who would do that? If I didn't have a spoiler-free walkthrough, I never would have gotten it. <laughs> Fujibayashi and Furukawa try their best to explain. Kyo, <laughs> Kyo, I'm doing the talking. <laughs> Just calm down. Kyo is ready to attack like a pit bull, and I have to rein her in. あの、これはもらいものでもともとは持ち主が違って、明後日大事な友達にプレゼントするんです。この場合よりのことがとても気に入っているんです。プレゼントするならなおのこと。素性のはっきりした楽器をお勧めしたいがね。He opens a catalog and points at a beginner's violin. ほら、これなら値段も。He's <laughs> really trying to sell us this one. <laughs> Furukawa shakes her head to stop the explanation. She must have heard numerous times already. 他のバイオリンでは意味がないんです。修理代はきっと私たちで何とかしますから。no, we got a light orb from Ryo's good ending. I'm pretty sure. I think we got a light orb for Ryo's good ending and Kyo's good ending. I could be wrong about that. I'd have to go back and check. We didn't? Really? Then Ryo just doesn't have a light orb. <laughs> this continues for about an hour. The owner finally caves. Well, here's here's the thing. The real ending wasn't a bad ending. We still got a happy ending with her. We just didn't get a light orb. And I still think the real good ending was better than the Kyo. Well, maybe not. The Kyo good ending because Rio ends up with what is I hinted to be Kape. <laughs> Oh, it, for real, it was just an achievement, not a light orb. Okay. <laughs> That's not how that works, Kyo. That's impossible! Just shut up! <laughs> ここまでひどいとなると... He looks at the broken violin like it's a lost cause. No one can say anything. By the time we leave the store, it's already dark out. <laughs> Kyo is still mad. <laughs> Who does he think he is? An expert in instruments? As the owner of an instrument store, he probably knows a lot. No, maybe just admit that you're wrong, Kyo. You're talking crazy now. Not true, though. How great the world would be if that were true. Anyway, we have to wait for the estimate. <laughs> Kyo is very good at making people donate money. I mean, convincing people to donate money. If we leave it to you, it won't be a donation drive. It'll be extortion. Exactly! <laughs> I would if I could. Furukawa murmurs something under her breath. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. She goes silent again. Her silence spreads to the rest of us like it's contagious. The violin is broken. It won't be fixed in time for Kotomi's birthday. We don't even know if it'll be the way it was before. <sighs> this is the end result of the free girls trying to do something for Kotomi. <sighs> A deep, deep sigh. <laughs> the town is bustling in the early evening. 
People are laughing as they stroll through the evening air, now free of humidity. I look up to see a clear night sky. Silver stars are glittering here and there between wisps of clouds. There are so many people in this world. Why is it so difficult to make just one of them happy? They're pushing it hard for the violin because they know how much it means to Kotomi. It's midnight. The May darkness feels sticky. Insects are incessantly chirping. The grass smells of the evening dew. I'm still digging in the dirt. The goal is to replace the soil of the flower bed. There's no light here. What little I can see is due to the starlight. I stick the shovel into the dirt and put my weight into it. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Feels like I'm digging up a corpse. <laughs> digging with a shovel in the middle of the night is one of the creepier things you can do. That's not against the law, I would say. The memories of my childhood are probably buried under here. I wipe away the sweat and turn to look at the house. The roof is high off the ground as if hovering above me. Glints of light reflect off of the jet black mirror-like windows. Is Kotomi asleep? Can she sleep right now? Is she having a bad dream? I have no answers. I glare at the darkness and keep digging. Dang, Tomi is just going all out for her. All of the worries I kept trapped inside during the day are inching their way up my body, starting from the soles of my shoes. When I find out that all of this is for nothing, when not a single thing I believe in comes to pass, what will I do then? Will I be able to withstand it? I don't know. The darkness whispers to me. None of it will come back. What was broken shall never heal. The dead will never return. Now's the time to quit. This isn't something that other people can help with. Only time will solve this. Only time. We ain't quitting! Man, the game really wants us to quit. Dirk, don't you want the bad ending, bro? And that's the final decision we have to make for her route. Instead of answering, I keep digging. You're no fun. After spitting out that remark, the voice disappears. I finish digging up the dirt in the flower bed. I throw down the shovel and lie on the grass. The darkness seems thicker. Morning is supposedly on its way, but I have no idea where it is. <laughs> the smell of the earth fills the air as I try to catch my breath. Ooh, that's pretty. Ooh, that's a pretty image. In the cloudless sky, I see a cluster of stars that resemble tips of needles all bundled together. I can see many more stars here than in town. As if playing to a soundless melody, they twinkle in the sky. My eyelids feel heavy, and I'm tempted to close them. The stars blur and appear to come closer to me. I open my eyes wide, and the stars go back to their original distance. I play this little game for a while. One of the stars falls onto the grass. What? Is this a dream sequence? What the? I get up from the grass. A light is floating above the cut grass as small as a bean. A firefly. A transient flickering as if to, it wants to tell me something. It's weightless. I can't even tell if it's warm or cold. All I know is that it exists. Light in its purest form. If I had to compare it to something, I'd say it's like a fragment of a star. Is this a dream? Is this a light orb? Is this an omen or an afterimage? The light soon dims. Unknowingly, I reach out. It is a light orb. Well, maybe not. Wow, we literally slept here. <laughs> I wake up to the sound of a bird song. Upon opening my eyes, a bright blue sky fills my vision. Huh? My bed feels prickly and cold. I feel around and find nothing but wet grass. Why was I sleeping here? That's right, I'm in Kotomi's garden. I feel like I was dreaming. That was... I start to get up and notice my jacket spread across my stomach. Oh yeah. I'm starting to remember. After digging up the soil in the flower bed, I sat down and rolled over on my side to rest. And after that, I... I... Huh? My memory is failing me. I was on the ground and I was cold, so I went to grab my jacket? What? The tail of the dream slips through my grasp just as I'm about to catch it. Oh well. I let out a big yawn and stretch. 
Despite having slept outdoors, I feel rested. I squint in the morning sun as I look up at Kotomi's house. As usual, it looks deserted. Good morning, Kotomi. Then I look around at the garden. A work in progress. I really need to finish it up today. Time to get started. I stand up. My first job of the day is to trim the garden trees. Referencing the book I bought yesterday, I start by using the hedge clippers. The trees don't come out as nicely as if a pro had done it, but they look much different with shorter branches. After trimming down the branches that were sticking out, more light is getting through the garden. I can hear some kids, maybe in kindergarten or elementary school, chatting on their way to school. I hear the noise of a truck engine pull up near the hedge. I put down the clippers and head to the front. Just as I thought, it's a truck bearing the hardware store's logo. A tall guy I assume to be the driver is looking at the nameplate in front of the house. Hello. Yes, that's right. My name is different from the one on the nameplate, which explains his confusion. Can you drop them off inside the gate? I'll carry them to the rest of the way. Dang, he's just going all out! Phew! I take a break after bringing the stuff to the corner of the garden. Leaf mold, fertilizer, flowers, a bag with additional tools and accessories. After partying with Kyo and the others yesterday, I spent all of my savings on these veins. I mixed and matched the different types of flowers I found in the gardening section. Even in their plastic pots, their colors are bringing life back to the garden. Using a hose, I draw some water from the faucet. I scrub down the dirty bricks with the water. Then I lay down the leaf mold. I mix it with the soil I dug up last night and till it with a spade. I'll let it sit in the sun for a while. Next up is some lawn maintenance. I don't have time to lay down new sod, so I just decide to mow the existing grass. I'm trying to wonder, how much of this route would have happened if we had said no to starting the drama club? Because that was a completely optional choice. It supposedly had no effect on whether we got Kotomi's route or not. But it really seemed to have a massive choice. He was apparently saving up the money to leave his house. It didn't explain how he got it, though. Part-time job, maybe. Uh, I don't have time to lay down these sods, so I decide to just mow the existing grass. I change out the lawnmower's blades and oil them up. Starting at the edge of the lawn, I push the lawnmower with all my strength. There's a... <clears throat> excuse me. A loud rumbling sound as the tires and blades start to spin. A shower of grass kicks up into the air, spewing into a receptacle. I don't know how many times I walk back and forth mowing the entire lawn. The garden looks really different now that the grass is trimmed. It looked so gloomy up until now, but it suddenly seems much brighter. The last thing to work on is the flower bed. I take the flowers from their pots and plant them one by one, keeping color coordination in mind. The bricks draw a gently sloping curve. The blooming flowers of early summer give off fresh fragrances and colors. The open space with its clean-cut grass. In the middle of it all is a bright white table and two garden chairs. I feel a strange sense of confirmation, as if the jigsaw pieces of my dreams are sliding into place. You think Tomia has already always been hardworking, but he's given up at the start of the story? That's possible. Gardening's not easy at all. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> Yard work in general is very tiring. I forget everything and immerse myself in gardening. But he, Tomia seems to actually kind of enjoy this work, which is great. Late in the afternoon, my work is done. Wow, that lo what a difference that makes. That looks gorgeous. The garden is back to how it used to be. This is fancy music. The precious place where Kotoma and I first met. I can't believe that I actually finished it. The types of flowers or the length of the grass might not be exactly right. I don't know, this looks really good. <laughs> but still, I did everything I could. I don't think anything's missing. Wait, yes there is. One large and very important piece is still missing, in order for it all to come together. All I can do now is wait. I just realized that I'm insanely tired. It's a comfortable sort of exhaustion. I feel like I could sleep for days. But I can't sleep just yet. Now that the garden is back to the way it used to be, there are other things to do. I go to a garden chair, which now looks like it just does, which now looks just like it does in my memories. I poke at the seat to make sure the paint is dry, and then I slowly sit down. I put on my jacket and rummage around in my pockets. Inside is the book that Kotomi entrusted to me, the book with the leather cover. Like some old and worn dictionary, the edges of the pages are curled. 
I open the cover and take a look inside. The faded pages have a color similar to baked bread, and the book is worm-eaten in many places. Why did Kotomi tell me not to read it? The answer must be inside. Sorry, but I'm going to read it. I whisper that to suppress the small pains of guilt I'm feeling. I turn to the inside cover and start reading. It seems like a collection of short stories. Possibly because the book is translated from another language, it's far from an easy read. I skim through the first few stories and move on to another one. It appears to be a story about a girl who says she's from the future, who meets a middle-aged man. Soon I look up from the pages. <sighs> I let out a big yawn. I'm extremely sleepy. It must be because of how comfortable the garden is. I try to return my attention to the book. Yeah, Tomoya, you've got a promising future in the realm of yard work. Holy cow. <laughs> Tomoya likes work that can give him satisfaction. I mean, work that gives you satisfaction is just pretty pleasing in, in general. I realize that the book has slipped from my fingers onto my lap. The gentle wind flips through the pages. Unable to bear it anymore, I close my eyes. A soft, dense of, a soft sense of sleepiness wraps around my head. A distant memory washes over me like a high tide. Back then. That's right, I was with Kotomi. No, that's not true. That book was newer, bigger, and had a nicer binding. Low tide arrives to sweep me away, and my consciousness fades. How poetic. Oh yeah, that was a weird thing she said. Gradually, I forget where I am and what day it is. And then he sleeps for five days. I sense that I'm very close to being swept away into sleep. That's right. It's not that the book was bigger. We were... We were smaller. 